Now, it's worth starting this video with a slow clap for Apple. They outed themselves again in innovating in hardware in the PC space, but is everything as good as you might have heard already? And how does that reflect towards UX design, product design, you know, graphic processing and actual pro work in terms of design? All those different bits you might seen already about the new architecture, all those fancy images, infographics, you know, saying that it's almost four times quicker than the industry benchmark PC, that it has faster image processing by seven times. For example, the CPU performance is 3.5 times faster, that it outperforms any PC out there by like double, has an amazing machine learning capacity of like 15 times faster, things of that nature. But the caveat here is that Apple is being Apple, comparing it to kind of like a baseline PC. You know, we're not comparing it to the top notch MacBook, what I have, for example, for to use for product design and, you know, video editing efforts. That's why the numbers are so crazy. One thing for sure, which is actually like, you know, kind of attracted my attention was the battery life they're talking about, because that's something, you know, why you would have a laptop to begin with promising up to 20 hours of playback time and 17 hours of wireless web browsing. If you would use Figma on a web browser, I wonder if that would stack up as a browsing or if it would that would stack up as a more intensive you know cpu or gpu intensive effort which would not tax the battery either way those hours are crazy and so it seems like that architecture would drive that better capacity to run that however everything if you look at all the specs and even photos of what they're showcasing all of that still lives in that limited chassis which they reuse from other mac so you know the thermal performance of this beast of a chip is going to definitely be taxed there is no way any chip could sustain that heat for a prolonged amount of time and when it comes to say video rendering or whatever you might do as a designer in a creative effort so that's just going to explode and performance is definitely going to drop so that's a key caveat here otherwise we have a big sir which just came out kind of unifies that touch screen experience and that mobile experience so if you are owner of an iPhone, an iPad. Now you're going to have almost the same design system uh, replicated from device to device, from channel to channel. This is almost like a key significant moment for designers to keep in mind because it's almost like a visual key identifier that, hey, some things are about to change. The introduction of a chip, which is very similar architecture to, let's say, an iPhone or an iPad, to the mobile devices, to the tablets, now signifies that in the future we can expect it to be very seamless, meaning you're going to be able to work on the same bits continuously through any device whatsoever. The apps are gonna be continuous. So for you as a designer, as a UXer, as a product designer, front-end developer or apps developer, this is a critical moment because you're gonna be able to design one app for all of them. It's also probably a challenge because you're gonna have to consider how that same app could look like in different environments and different channels. You're gonna need to design it as a service. You're gonna need to think holistically. You're gonna need to do some user research to understand how and where your users would use it because you know it's not just gonna be a blanket drop-in and then it caters to all environments. It's gonna work but is it gonna work well, it's gonna be your job. And that's what I'm excited about, because this is an opening to that kind of like holistic take on user experience. All the technical notes, performance bits, comparison stuff, it's BS. I mean, this is generation one of M1 chip. And so I wouldn't even consider upgrading unless you really need that laptop and your keyboard maybe broke from the older generations of MacBook Pros. All the Apple talks is about the smooth transition between GPU, CPU, the chip is unified and uses the same storage for DRAM. You know, you don't have to be too technical to understand it, but it also has the limited capacity soldiered on RAM and it only comes with 16 gigabytes. I, I can't remember the last time it was probably half a decade ago that my laptop for pro work was that low. And you know, they all talk about this efficient caching, cache, cache, cache. It means that the RAM usage is gonna be over the top. And if you have only 16 gigs, it's not really a pro device. But that's just my thoughts. I think it's exciting from architecture standpoint and long-term results of that ecosystem developing even further so you know ios and mac os users can actually enjoy it better because the experiences are going to be much more continuous and holistic if you have your opinion or you disagree or agree or you have something else to add 
leave a comment down below subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so if you like this video give a like and on that note i'll see you next time